So I am pre-filming this video because I know next week I won't have enough time. Does that mean I'm a real YouTuber now? So hello, hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to my very small place on the internet where I talk about my knitting adventures, my knitting life, my knitting choices. And so there is this channel on YouTube. I also push the audio part on Apple podcast and YouTube podcast. Well, on YouTube podcast is both video and audio, but you can choose to listen to audio only. So today it's going to be an episode about my woolly stories and it's linked to the previous episode in that series where I talked about yarn gifted to me but at the time I did not talk about all of it and I had said I would I would make another video so I may re make another name gave another name to the previous video and call it part 1 and call this one part 2 so uh if my impression and my um, review of knitting and wearing pieces that I've knit with yarn that I did not choose is of some interest to you. Please stay tuned. Okay, so first things first. What am I wearing? I am wearing my fishbone chunky sweater by Neringa Ruki that I knit between May 2021 and December uh, 2021, an oldie and a goodie, and it's knit with yarn I got in the Pyrenees when I was there in the Pyrenees at that, that summer, 2021. There was no label on the yarn. The lady said it's Donegal yarn. I can only trust her. It was not yarn from her mill. It was a, another mill in saran colin than the um, a more hair farm I'm used to visit every every year, every time I go there. So I'm not sure what it means. I, I know what Donegal yarn is, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. All I know it was um, the yarn weight and I need this sweater that is extremely warm, uh, a bit a bit bulky, it's a drop sleeve. sleeve. You know I do not like dropped sleeves, but you know, you, you can see the texture of the sweater makes it not be very much elongated on the shoulders. The yarn is quite sturdy, it's quite rustic, it's holding on itself, it's quite dry, and the texture pattern does that. The shoulder stitches are not elongated, and this is what I like it, and of course, I love the color. Um, I love that green. And I'm knitting with some green right now, if you've seen my latest video. And I'm already thinking about a hat where I could combine different things with the green yarn I have left over. Okay, so first, there is no particular order. I'm trying to be sort of order from the timeline where I've been receiving and knitting, but there is no particular real order. So I'm going to be starting with my birthday from 2022. We are in my birthday month for 2023, so this was a year ago. Um, two of my sons, my second son and my third son, gifted me with yarn. The first is um, the yarn that my second son got me. He was in Cardiff last year for a science seminar or something for his PhD. He went across a local yarn shop, went in and asked, he had asked previously what I would like and I said, choose whatever you want. Um, between fingering decay and talk to the lady and look at the price and decide for yourself. So we got some mariner pure wool, it's decay, 100 grams. Uh, I will write maybe the uh, yardage because uh, there is a sticker on the yardage here. And so this mariner yarn, he got two balls of this gray, without the blue, of course, two balls of this heathered gray, one of the blue, blue just seen, one of the yellow saffron type of color, and one of a pure red. 
So I've used seen, um, I've used each colorway. I've used each one of them. So there was, I'm not sure I recall, one, one ball of each of the colored ones and two balls of the gray. So with the gray, that was the most important in quantity. I had two balls. I cast on my last year's birthday cast on with it. And I knit a little Linton um, uh, shawl, which is the magic dot shawl with um, the gray and the, the dots being the blue. Are you seeing it on the right side? Yes, you are seeing it on the right side. I debated a lot between uh, using the blue as an accent or another color. And I thought, so I use the blue, it's more um, in line with what I'm usually wearing. I need the recommended size. I used uh, one ball and this is what is left of the other one. And I have a lot left from the blue colorway. So I need to find something. I wear it quite a bit. So. Um, I wear it quite a bit. It's a very convenient piece. It's small. Um, it can be worn with shirts or sweaters under a jacket, under a coat and things like that. It's a super wash yarn, so it's easy to clean. Um, I had at some point a coffee sp spot on, on it and I just cleaned that part. It was very easy to clean and I, I wear it I wear it quite a bit quite a lot especially with my more formal uh, jackets okay what do I have to say about this knitting experience if you can see here this is uh, the yarn is plied of course because it's a heather between a light and a darker gray it's quite splitty if you use uh, very pointy needles. So at first I was knitting with my higher, higher, very sharp needles. And then I moved to knitting with bamboo needles or wooden needles because it was too splitty. And this is something I, I, I don't handle splitty yarn very well. I am used to tensioning my yarn on my right finger. I am a thrower. And if, if the yarn is very splitty, the way I move my needles make it go through the plies and uh, I have to redo a lot of it. So a less pointy needle for me is the best way to knit with that yarn. So the next month in December, I used the red yarn and as you've seen, I've, all, I've used almost all of it to knit um, the Miracle by Olga Boraya Kefelian. I think you can see all the uh, texture of the coal and I do love it. So uh, this little coal is also very, very practical. It's light. Um, it can be really folded all, <laughs> all the ways. It won't look wrinkled, be, wrinkled because of course it is wrinkled by itself. And I do wear it a lot. The same way I wear the dotted, uh, the dotted, the little dotted uh, shawls, uh, shawl, um, or it's a larger scarf, with shirts, with jackets, um, also with more formal wear outfits and you see even with my sweater that has a big cold you can add it on top of it it's it's wide enough to go over a big turtleneck and it's small enough to be close to my own neck and keep me warm so yeah that's the second piece I need with um, the yarn that my second son brought me so the final piece I made with that yarn that Theo brought me was with the yellow saffron type of colorway, caramel, caramel colorway. And it's um, the Annette Mittens by Lorian and Charlie. So uh, these mittens, I also do wear them a lot and I want to make more, maybe not of that precise um, pattern because I've already made one so maybe maybe I don't need to make another another one but I'm going to be making more mittens because as I've realized I have leather 
uh, gloves to, to wear during the winter time. But leather gloves, although they are very useful and practical and, and everything, that's not the point. I realized after having these mittens that I've been wearing them a, a awful lot, really, really very much. And as I, you know, the, the other pieces were in my closet. This one was in my, it was in my coat. Um, I wear them a lot and when I'm cold and I need to write on the computer and have things like that, I, I use them also that way. So uh, I like the little detail, the little butterfly detail um, that many other people have used on other type of projects. And I'm gonna be making more mittens for myself, I know, because this is a piece I use a lot. So I have the same, the same review um, about the yarn and the knitting experience. As I knew already, I used, for both of them, I used uh, bamboo or wood, wooden needles. And uh, yes, I am very happy. And I'm, I, I guess I'm gonna say that every time. So I'm gonna try not to be saying that every time, but I do love to wear and knit and wear pieces where there are pieces of you or other people in it. And, and, and when, I, when I use them, I am reminded of these people. I don't need that to be thinking of people, but uh, I really do love to be reminded of people in my needs. Okay, so next is um, what I've done with the yarn that my third son, Paulin, uh, and his girlfriend offered me on my birthday. You've, talk, you've heard me talk about it just um, in my previous video because I've been knitting again with what I had left over. The first uh, pattern I knit, and let me see when was that. I cast it on in November 2022, and it took me a very long time to finish it because uh, double layer, double knitting, um, gingham pattern, it was quite a, quite a challenge for me. So I finished it in the beginning of May. So it took me five or six months to knit it. Uh, so uh, you've already heard me talk and seen me talk about it. I uh, made the real gingham stuff. So on one side, there is one color and there is the complementary color on the other side between this sunflower yellow color and this kind of little lavender lilac color. Um, and they got it at least Lille Vessel, um, a famous yarn uh, store in Paris because my son's girlfriend uh, lives in Paris and studies in Paris. So this one I had finished last spring, of spring 2023, and uh, I was kind of uh, thinking about what am I going to be doing with the rest of the yarn. And so I left, I left it on the side because it was uh, a bit warmer. So maybe I can put it on because it's gonna be okay with that sweater as far as the colors. So you see it's wide enough once again to be holding a big turtleneck under and keeping me warm. So this one I've also been wearing it a lot. And I had one ball left of each. So I, you see I've used the uh, little lilac lavender color and I still have one ball of the yellow sunflower color uh, that I need to decide what to do with it. So I left I left things come to me. I had it in the back of my mind. I want to do something else to go with the color, the little coal and whatever. Um, as it's my birthday month this month, um, in terms of time, I'm on her mailing list. I'm sorry. Um, Ramses, Ramses is a very talkative ta cat and sometimes he starts to talk a lot. So in terms of time, on her mailing list gave me a coupon code for my birthday and the coupon code was enough for small accessory or uh, a discount on a bigger uh, bigger piece i chose the no, no pom pom uh, little hat uh, the art deco no pom pom hat she has several in this series and it's quite interesting and this little hat once I made it, I thought maybe 
do I make a pom-pom? Do I not make a pom-pom? And I decided I made a pom-pom. So you need the pom-pom. And I stuffed it with uh, um, a very fine stocking uh, that I, I had left on its own. I cut it in half so that the pom-pom is uh, uh, just the right size. And okay, it's on, he's on the table now. And just the right size, he, he may come. Um, and, and it goes very well with my little color and I'm very, very happy. So I need to know what I'm going to be doing with the yellow ball. This is what I have left of the lavender. I'm not sure what I'm going to be making because I've already mittens that are quite close as a colorway. So I'm going to, I'm not going to make yellow mittens again. So I need to find something to be doing. Maybe not a hat, I don't really know, or maybe I will incorporate and I use it in another project for color work or something. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with it, but I'm gonna, the same way for the little uh, no pom pom hat, let the story and the patterns and uh, come to me. And once I know what I want to be making with it, I'll use it. Okay, next um, is a, an also so satisfying um, pro project and, and present and everything. Rosemary, Rosemary is in Australia. Uh, she sent me for my birthday last year, exceptional yarn. The one I cast it on for, this was my, uh, yeah, my, Last year, so 2022, Christmas cast on. The first I cast it on was uh, the Louis and Lola Merino singles yarn that she gave me. She gave me two skeins and I have that much left on of the second one. And I cast it on the Rainforest Canopy Shawl by Helen Stewart, which is a, a pattern that's been designed to, for this yarn. This project was quite long. I finished it in March, the end of March, so that's three full months to knit it. I made a couple mistakes, but they are completely invisible, and I've been wearing it a lot, and I can tell you, it smells. <laughs> there is a bit of my perfume, perfume smell <laughs> in it, because I don't spray perfume. I've talked already uh, about the perfume. I may, I may, I may, um, place the video up there where I talk about my uh, perfume and my knits. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, I do love when I retrieve perfume in my knit, and that's the case. I haven't been wearing it since, I would say, this summer. And uh, uh, it's a perfect shoulder yarn, is extremely drapey, is extremely nice to be knitting with. Um, it did block really nicely and I do love this little purpley color with green and other type of speckles in it and it's it's a very nice pattern. Uh, Helen Stewart has placed on every row you know what to do. It's labeled, it's written out. Every row you need you know what to do and every so often she tells you you've done 10 percent 25 percent etc etc very easy to follow i even did knit the little pico border that was recommended for the pattern i'm not a pico border type of person this one is just perfect and every time i wear it i am reminded of rosemary the same with the other projects and uh I'm sending positive brain waves and, and good things um, every time I wear it. The lace is not that easy. Very well worded out, not that easy. And I've made mistakes, but as the pattern has repeats on itself, the mistakes are, are completely invisible and I'm not even sure. If I look closely, I guess I can find them again. But if I don't look closely, I, it's totally invisible to me. So um, this color is just fitting me very well. I think it goes very well with the green, very well with other pieces I have with my blues. Um, or it does fit my wardrobe 
very well, even with the brighter colors, even with red and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's the first thing I need with uh, Rosemary's present. The second thing I need with Rosemary's present, she's spoiled me, you know. Um, it's uh, uh, the Dr. Dre's by Stephen West, and I need it with this uh, Tandai uh, Paul Worth silk in four ply. Uh, that is not made any longer. The yarn is the dra yarn drape is exceptional. I need that during the months of April. It took me a bit less than 20 days uh, to knit it. The Polworth yarn, this yarn is exceptional. It's very drapey, very warm, very light. And I made a few mistakes too in the pattern and I stopped between um, the first and second size, there are two sizes in this pattern, and I stopped because I need every single drop of the yarn and I even have had to uh, finish the last little bit with another yarn of about the same color but a, a heavier yarn weight and I did not want to be left to have leftovers and I did not want to uh, cast off two rows back to um, rip out two rows to, to be going back and have enough to do my cast off all with the yarn. So I decided I was going to finish with another yarn that nobody but me knows that I've been doing it. So it's on one or the other end. I wear it a lot too. This color is also very easy to combine with about everything. The shawl is very easy to wear. It's medium sized. Shawl is it's a crescent shawl. Uh, it's medium sized, so you see you can wear it that way. Or as I like to wear my shawls to have to be warm that way on my shoulders. And then I kind of, you know, try to butch it up and tuck it inside so that it doesn't butch too much. It doesn't move. The little holes, I've made mistakes. You can see it. Some of them are not perfectly aligned to the stitch. No problem. So both the pattern is easy to be knitting and uh, to have, mis if you make mistakes, to keep them on, nobody sees it. The yarn is just exceptional. I know Paul Worth, uh, the Paul Worth yarn, they have other type of yarn um, that they are, uh, they have replaced it, this one with. It's, it's an ex exceptional gift. Once again, I never will thank uh, Rosemary enough for um, that present. So next is a languishing project. I am so ashamed I haven't finished it. Such is life, such is life. And along with the Paul Worth and the Louis and Lola yarn, Rosemary sent, and I'm missing one here. Yes, here it is. Rosemary sent some uh, additional uh, mohair from Wagtail uh, yarn. So there is the uh, variegated cyan, a cyan, a turquoise, and a white, and a green that I've been using, and you may have seen it already in my, uh, if you've seen my previous video. So my little powder puff coal that, come, <laughs> that she gave the pattern to me also, um, to knit um, with the variegated, so with the mohair, and I chose to use the variegated cyan. My powder puff coat, it's on its last few rows. I need to finish it. I need to finish it, but I usually have it in my, uh, in my bag so that I can knit uh, a row here and there. So it's going to be finished at some point. Um, so I had a bit of a trouble at first to understand what the pattern was. So the powder puff cord is by Branca Medlock. I had a bit of adjustment to the pattern, but now I have it in my mind. I just count my rows and knot them along and uh, it's gonna be a really nice piece. I know I will love it. And I know it's gonna go with about everything that I wear. I just need to 
place it on top of my mind and decide to finish it. This is all I have to be doing. So that was the variegated cyan. And I will have way more because this was a bigger ball. It was a 100 gram ball and the other ones are uh, 50 and 25 grams. So I will have enough to make other things. Um, Hamses is on the table once again. So with um, the other ones, so you've seen, you, you've seen, I'm not, I haven't been using these two ones and I have things into my mind, but uh, I've been using the green one. So here is the leaf green colorway uh, that I'm using in my current, one of my current work in progress. If, if, you've, if you've seen my latest video, you know about it. It's I'm knitting the Sorel Suet sweater once again with yarn from Normandy, the Romney yarn by Atelier Purlaine, Frédéric at Atelier Purlaine, and I'm mixing it with uh, the lime green, it's leaf green mohair. My idea, and I'm going to be talking about this other yarn just after, uh, my idea here, I cast it on with some uh, bichet bush that one of you and I'm going to be talking about just next, um, gave also gave me for my birthday last year. So there is a Le Petit Lambs Wool and Le Petit Silk mo Mohair in dark blue turquoise. And my idea is that I will fade the mohair once I run out or once the yoke is finished with the lime green uh, to fade the mohair and keep the romney for the sweater. Fade the mohair and go to the uh, dark blue turquoise. And my idea is also to knit one row and cast off on the cuffs and at the bottom of the sweater with um, the uh, le petit lambs wool in also in dark green mohair. And as you can see, I'm, I usually don't talk about that, but as you can see, when I knit in the round and when I cast on and that I have a, lit, a few stitches and it's difficult not to twist or a lot of these stitches and it's difficult to be certain I'm not twisting my these stitches. What I do is I need one row. So there is the cast on and there is the first row uh, with the dark blue turquoise here and then I joined in the round and I'm just gonna graft it afterwards or um, sew it together and it's completely invisible and then you have a little more uh, fabric so that you are certain that your stitches are not uh, twisted. So how is it to knit with this mohair? So at, at the 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 uh, the cool and my sweater. This mohair is silk mohair that I guess you can find uh, and have the same experience with many different brands. It's very soft, it's very shiny and uh, uh, the cool is very light and very warm the way uh, silk mohair and baby silk mohair is. It's, it's a very precious yarn to be knitting with and as you've seen the yarn is quite shiny because of the silk content. This shine is lost when I mixed it with the Romney yarn. So um, you can either keep it by knitting the silk mohair yarn by itself or uh, you can see it less by mixing it with um, another yarn. And uh, you can see it here. This one is much shinier. It's the silk mohair by itself and it's much shinier and you keep and by knitting it alone you keep that silky shiny feeling with the mohair. Okay next is my January 1st 2023 cast on and I cast it on the Borough Hood by Tori Yu. This hood I'm gonna just wear it once again, uh, this hood, you can make two little flaps that you can tie, it, tie them together uh, at the bottom of at the front of the hood. I thought it was a bit too girly and things. So uh, this is Ramses who's playing with my bags. 
So the borrow hood I knit with uh, Biche Bush, Le Petit Lamb's Wool in dark blue turquoise and Le Petit Silk Mohair in the same color. And these are in my bags. Are you not focusing? So I knit, so uh, one of you, you've never said your name, so I'm keeping your name uh, uh, safe. One of you sent me two skins of uh, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. And I use less, less than one ball for the complete hood and a bit over one ball of the Le Petit Lamb's Wool and over a ball of uh, Le Petit Silk Mohair. And I'm using what's left on my uh, current work in progress, which is my uh, newest Sorel sweater. This hood I wear a lot and I had decided also that uh, if my Sorel sweater, which is just right here, is too yellow to fit me the way I like, I will wear the hood with it. And uh, uh, at some point I was thinking that every sweater, uh, as uh, Jackie from Caddy Jack Knits had said at some point, long time ago, that uh, every sweater should, had a, should have a hood to go with it. This is. I, I'm, I'm completely embracing this uh, concept. And I was thinking, if this is too yellow or um, too lime green and it makes me look too pale or sick, uh, I will wear it with the hood that uh, is a color that I think fits me perfectly. And you've already said that to me on several occasions. So I'm going to keep the hood because I'm going to go teach um, after I film the video. And this, this hood for this current rainy, rainy weather is going to be perfect under my coat and around my neck. And, uh, and I also wear it with um, my little bandana with a, a gray romne that I brought from Atelier Purlaine. So, um, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. Le Petit Lamb's Wool is rather dry to the touch. It's very soft. I'm not, and, and you know, I like, I love rustic yarn. So uh, it's quite dry to the touch. The association with the uh, silk mohair that you can see is also very shiny, makes um, uh, a piece that is very soft and, and airy and warm. And I, I do love that, you know that already. And it's very easy to be knitting with. The color is very deep. It's deepened by the mohair by itself. And uh, this color is exceptional. It's quite uniform. And this color is really fantastic. And it was a perfect choice for me. So a yarn that is quite rustic, easy to knit with, pleasant to knit with, pleasant to wear, I had no problem, no splitting, no anything like that. Pleasant to wear, it's light and warm as I like. And uh, that goes with also a lot of the pieces from my wardrobe. And as I had already talked about um, the unspun yarn that I had been gifted with and that I have need the floor shawl, I'm not gonna be, gonna be talking about that. And, anymore. I'm just going to be showing it to you because I love it too. Um, so the Unspun Yarn has had a separate video so uh, uh, that I will link down below. So that is it for today. Um, I do love to wear, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure I, the, how this, this is going to come out in English, but I like to wear things from you. I'm not sure how to say that. I, I love to wear pieces, wear, knit and wear pieces where there are other people in it. And I've been thinking of these people when I was knitting in positive ways. And I'm thinking of these people when I wear um, what I've what I've been making making with um, with their yarn. So this is absolutely not a call for uh, gifting me things. I have way enough. I have way enough. But yeah, this is something I like to be doing. I love that to place some meaning and some people into my needs and into my my wares. So. 
Ram says has finally decided to come with me so that I, I think he wants me to pet him and, and be with me. I hope that this episode you may hear him purring. I hope that you liked this episode. Um, I do hope that uh, you also can place joy, happiness, people and positive thoughts into your knitting because it helps me much um, bearing with what the current world is and it's really depressing sometimes so uh, I kind of just listen to the news just the amount I need to have and be informed about what's happening but not for the rest and place people and happiness and joy into my knitting into my um, the needs I wear when I work on them and when I store them and when I retrieve them. And when I think of all the people um, who are here with me, thanks to this project, thanks to you, and I do hope you are able to do the same and it helps you, um, it helps you through your own life, maybe maybe not show your bottom to everyone, even though uh, when a cat shows <laughs> a rear end, it's a real sign of trust. So I do hope that you are able to manage to place joy and happiness into your knitting, into your day, into your life. And I thank you very much for being here with me. I thank you very much for liking, subscribing, commenting and all that. That make me feel that you are here behind the screen on the other side of the world, at the other end of the line. And uh, yes, I thank you very, very much for being here with me. And uh, I hope I will see you next time.